For this video, we're going to address this door panel and the damage. Using a piece of 18 gauge, I'm going to go ahead and make a patch for the center of the door. I'm going to mark out the area here for a patch panel, and more accurately, where that style line is on the door. I'm going to mark that onto our sheet metal and prep to run that little line through the bead roller here. Softening up the bead roller line here a little over a one inch dolly makes it match the door real nice. Same technique, large wide sharpie and a scribe so we can accurately cut out the patch. Once scribed I used the panel saw to get a very accurate cut. So we got our patch in here and everything's fitting good just need to trim a little there but show you something here. This is the piece that came out. This was the damage that we were going after. And you can see, for some reason these two holes were put in. In fact, the holes were put into the crash bar, but it's not all the way through. It's not like they shot this with a rifle or something. So I don't know what's happening there, but here's what we found. Right here, really oil canned, this whole area. This, not so much. Uh, but this is, this is really stretched. It feels like this corner. So, there might have been some other, some other repairs here. Also, um, I couldn't see the inside of the door below here. So we got out and you could look in there. There's some, there's some corrosion right in here. So I'm going to step back here and change plans. We're going to make a whole new door skin. We're going to come up here, going to come around. I can't duplicate all that. So we're going to come around the lock and the door handle just like this and make a whole skin down. I think that'd be the best. Again, laying out my cut lines with some tape and a Sharpie. Now you notice here, can't really use a steel rule to measure just because of the joggle down at the lower end of the door. So I'll do this little trick with some masking tape, put it flush to the panel, and then I'll make two marks down at the lower door edge and then up top where my cut line's going to be. Now I can transfer this tape onto my new piece of metal and it'll incorporate the actual length of the piece with that joggle in it. Once I transfer my lines from my tape to the piece, simply cut it out. As we did earlier, I took some measurements with our tape and marked it onto the new panel in preparation for bead rolling the joggle that we're going to put in to match the existing door. So I don't want to have to make this door panel again. I'm using a scrap piece here to get the joggle just perfect. I started with just a little bit of pressure and just kept increasing it there until I got the same offset that matches the door as you'll see here in a minute. You can see here the joggle offset matches real nice. Where my left hand is there, I'm just going to have to put that lower end back in the brake, get a little bit more angle on there so it fits the door skin better. Now that I got the bead roll and the die set exactly what I want, time to run the actual door panel through here. Just taking my time to go as straight as possible on this. Here I'm just taking some 80 grit to the back of the panel in preparation for putting some zinc weld through primer on there. Flap disc on an angle grinder here works the easiest for me to remove any of these folded over edge door skins. Simply grind through till you see the split happen right in the center of the fold. The skin pops right off. Once the old skin's removed here and flipped over, you'll see the corrosion that we were worried about before. You can only see a little of it but it's right down on that lower edge where the pinch weld was. So the door itself, I'm going to take a flap disc to that and put some of our uh, rust encapsulator platinum on it, which is also a great weld through primer. At this point, the skin is pretty far along. I just need to get a little gentle contour in it, and um, I don't have a slip roll 
that large. So here I'm just going to weld up. You'll see here I'm just taking this heavy wall pipe, putting some little tabs on it so I can clamp it to the bench, and then just use that as a little radius break. Works pretty good to just put a nice gentle contour into the panel. Do it once, flip it around, hit the other side, and that's it. With the door on the car and my panel in place, I clicked it to assure everything lines up just as I want it. Here I'm rolling the style line on the upper portion of the door that goes through the door handle. And it also mates into the front fender and rear quarter panel, so this one has to be straight. Here I'm going to test fit it to make sure that the style line that we just rolled through the bead roller here works out with everything. So it worked out pretty good. Upper style line matches, the lower joggle still matches there, and same thing with everything back at the door handle there. Here I'm adding the half inch bend which will actually be folded and crimped around the door frame. With the door off the vehicle we did a quick test fit again. With a set of dividers I marked the 316 gap that we want on the new skin. Once the skin is trimmed to shape and then reinstalled back on the door to do our final cut. Now here you want to use the most accurate tool you can to cut this line. Once your cut is complete, go ahead and deburr the area. Here's the panel in place, getting ready to tack weld. I put my tacks about three inches apart all along of the cut line. From this view here, you can see that we have very minimal warping. Typically on a door skin, you're going to have a folded edge, a 90 degree fold, about half inch length, all around the door skin, similar to what we put on the bottom. However, I don't have a pull max that I can use dies to put that onto the skin we made. And using a bead roller, a tipping die, it's going to be pretty hard um, because of the contour that we have on this skin and assuring that we get that perfect gap. Even if you're off with just a 30 second on your bead roll, your tipping die, our gap's going to look horrible. So I'm going to show you an easy and very accurate way to complete the same thing. Here's your manila folder again. I'm going to hold on the inside of the door as you see here and then with my fingers and fingernail I'm going to press to find the outer edge of the skin that we made. I cut that contour out of our manila folder now we place it on the inner door skin. I'll take a pencil from underneath and trace the edge of our new door skin. So you can see how easy this process is. There's our piece. We're going to transfer it to metal and go ahead and that'll complete our inner door skin flange. Transferring my paper template to some 18 gauge, I cut out the piece. So I then drilled some 316 holes in it and clamped it in place to go ahead and plug weld. Now you simply weld the edges together, uh, skipping around just to keep the heat from concentrated in one area. Once fully welded, simply blend it. Here you want to use long continuous motions so that you keep the edge nice and straight. This is what the blended edge will look like. You can see there's a couple pinholes I got to come back and fill. So here you'll do the same thing. You use your cardboard template to get the um, pattern that you want for the metal. Cut it out of some 18 gauge, tack it in place. And you can see I'm just hammering as I go over these contours. You'll drill your 316 three holes and do your plug weld. And then go ahead and weld up the edge just as we did on the other side. This is what the completed edge looks like before we blend it. So I now hung the door back on just to make sure that my edges were good and then started completing the perimeter weld for the uh, repair. Just take your time, go slow, skip around a couple inches and it'll be fine. 
once done welding, let it cool and then go ahead and blend the weld and apply some Duraglass filler directly over the weld to keep it moisture proof. The tool I'm using here is something that we're developing here at Eastwood. You can see the weld bead there. What this does is it, it'll level just the highs of the bead itself. Now, it's not just a cutoff wheel. You can't just do this with any cutoff wheel. They'll fracture on you. This wheel is much thicker than uh, traditional cutoff wheels and designed for this. It's just shaving the top of that bead. Then you can come back with a flap disc or a little two inch and blend it. You see there how it's just taking the highs and the peaks right off. The benefit of this method is that you're not disturbing the surrounding metal. You're not thinning that out. And you're also focusing the heat just onto the weld bead. So you're not going to have much distortion. Here we are completed with the blending. Now we're going to go ahead and apply some Duraglass to the weld seam. The trick here is to go ahead and as you're using your spreader, really force it into the weld bead so if there are any pinholes, it covers those. Then you can go ahead and rough sand it. And that's it, you're done. You'll go ahead, once we get the uh, all the other repairs done, We'll skim coat the car and traditional polyester filler, you know, and really do the body work. But there it is with the new door skin. And the, uh, you can see the gaps look dead on.